What's up guys? I finally have a little time to myself where I'm not sleeping, so I thought I'd see if I remember how to do a video. I've been working very hard lately. But I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully I'll have a little more time in the future. And these processes don't take millions of years. They can happen very quickly. And ask the question that did some of these volcanic processes have something to do with A, preserving uh, evidence of an advanced ancient society, or B, was the use of these processes somehow responsible for like digging out the caves and things like that? Now, to clarify... There's a lot of people that agree that there was advanced ancient societies, but my take on things is that this was a very long time ago. I mean, you have like the Roman periods would what they call the Roman period would be ancient to us. And I think some of the more advanced societies like the megalithic builders were ancient to our ancient. So very long time back for the advanced technologies. If you look at all of the archaeological evidence out there, uh, we pretty well know what the ancients to us, the Romans, quote unquote, had going on. Um, about 90% of all archaeological digs are actually found by people, farmers and construction workers, mostly. And with all of the social media that we have nowadays, if people were stumbling across Tatarian hair dryers and washing machines then you know we we'd hear about it but we don't there are quite a few out of place artifacts but they do seem few and far between like the antikythera mechanism and the baghdad battery so let's just start right there with that electricity um i am taking the long way back around to the lp situation but let's talk about some earth sciences here we are going into a period known as the Grand Solar Minimum, which all that we can independently verify is that the sun goes through a period where not as many sunspots are visible. This one is an amateur astronomer I found here on YouTube. But when the sunspots slow down, it cools down. Now, this could just be a direct result of increased volcanic activity and dust clouds. It's very well documented that we have increased seismic and volcanic activity at these times. But then when the sun fires back up, you get bigger solar flares, bigger CMEs, and this is why you see an article in the newspaper every other week now saying that the no northern lights are visible from Kansas. But my question here is what is it about the sun's activity that would cause an increase in volcanic and seismic activity here on Earth. Let's talk about the electric universe theory, which one of the top search results now is that it's debunked. But anyway, Thunderbolts Project is a good source on this. 
And hey, what if space in the universe is one of the sciences that they completely lie to us about everything? Uh, like for the sun, how did all of these hydrogen molecules form together in a big, huge ball in the empty vacuum of space? But that is what they tell us is going on in the sun. The electric universe model just makes a lot more sense to me because basically everything is electricity as i'll talk about a little bit here in a minute uh but the sun being electrical in nature makes a lot of sense to me you guys remember a couple of years ago there's video of it where the sun starts blinking on and off and i know a lot of people say it's an artificial sun i don't buy that but i i think it might have been something resetting with the electrical system but anyway um in the Electric Universe Thunderbolts Project, they have sh demonstrated how the top left you have an electric plasma arc and then you have petroglyphs from all around the world that say the same thing. And guys, I have looked at tons of petroglyphs. There's no doubt in my mind that it is astronomical in nature what they are trying to convey. They saw some stuff. But everything is electrical in nature. If you jump down to the quantum level, then you're just talking about charges spinning around each other super fast. No, there's really no solid matter. There's no actual contact between anything. It's just charges that attract to each other or they repel each other. Now, all life requires electricity to perform its functions of living. If you think about our brains, you know, we refer to it as a neuron firing because it's an electrical charge that sends another biochemical electrical charge through our ner nervous system. So all animal life requires the use of electricity to live. Plants. If you guys remember sixth grade science fair, the potato battery, potatoes put off an electrical charge. And by the way, I'm scared to even think about what sixth graders these days are up to. Yeah. So in 2018, researchers discovered that plants can generate by a single leaf more than 150 volts enough to simultaneously power 100 LED light bulbs. Don't let the renewable energy police get wind of this because they'll insist on burning down all the trees so that they don't have any competition. So all life forms on Earth use electricity and on the darker side of things, you can think of like the matrix and the bio battery. But instead of the theoretical model that we're taught as fact of the sun being hydrogen, that when it shoots off a solar flare, then that is electromagnetic energy radiation that is hitting our atmosphere and causing the aurora borealis. Well, here's the problem is if you just burn hydrogen, that doesn't produce any electricity, any radiation, anything of the sorts. By combining oxygen with the hydrogen, then evidently they can produce an electrical charge. But there's no oxygen on the sun, supposedly. It's supposed to just be hydrogen burning. So how does it produce electricity? And for this model of theirs to work, then... 85% of the universe has to be made up of dark matter, which don't tell anybody, but, you know, they tried to find some evidence of it and they can't find any. So I don't necessarily agree with this model. I think the sun is electrical in nature. Uh, it puts off electrical radiation, which is absorbed by the plants for them to do their chlorophyll processes and everything. And for us animals, we have to consume biofuels in, in order to generate the electricity ourselves and hey everybody always feels better after a day out in the sun okay so this is a long way back around to <laughs> why does the sun cause volcanic and seismic unrest well look at volcanic lightning and ball lightning ball lightning occurs in some earthquake situations it was widely reported in the 1812 New Madrid earthquakes. But obviously there's something going on inside the earth that when you get this much friction, this much force built up, that electricity is being released. 
And the real truth of the matter is they don't know why. But let's look at piezoelectricity. You have an electrical charge that accumulates in certain solids such as crystals and in bone and DNA and everything. But when a strong force is enacted upon it, then it releases a quick charge of electricity. And not to go too far off on a tangent here, but I've heard the theory that all of the mountains are dead giants and limestone is giant's bones and this and that. And it, the problem is, is limestone definitely is full of seashells. So if that's giant's bones, then the giants were made a lot different than we are today. But perhaps the accumulation of large amounts of organic matter could be part of what is causing this piezoelectric effect. I personally think, having been to a lot of mountain places, is there's a lot of quartz crystals in all of the seismic areas because all of the mountains are uplifts. Uh, you, you can tell if you've studied them. And according to the ancient mythologies, they say that some of these mountain ranges literally formed overnight. And I believe it. But let's look at this animation of the seismic activity that's been going on underneath LP lately. You see this swirling motion. Uh, this is just the seismographs going off. So these are thousands of little earthquakes that are going. But you see at the beginning of it a definite clockwise motion to it. But just look at how much energy is building and building and being released by tiny earthquakes and some of these up to magnitude fives. So to hopefully tie all this mess together, if you have materials in the ground capable of releasing an electrical charge under pressure, then that would indicate that they have a latent electrical charge to them that could be acted upon by a release of electrical radiation from the sun. Or not, I don't know. <laughs> what I do know is they spew out a whole lot of ash, and so you have this going on is not only do you have lava flows associated with this, you have pyroclastic flows, which is what happened at Herculaneum, uh, which is now covered in complete stone, which I'll get to in a minute. But then you have the Pompeii-type scenarios where there's a lighter ash. But look is what is going on under the sea here, and look at all of this sea life getting buried in under all of this new volcanic ash. And then the, check out this little guy. This little guy tells the story right here. Because here's modern day happening right in front of our eyes on camera. Him getting encased in this volcanic ash. And then here is a fossil that this guy found on the beach. It just, it got encased in ash, I'm sure. Then the layer of ash probably broke apart and was washed smooth by the water over time. But there's your crusty crustacean in there. So this is not a process that takes millions of years. I mean, it can get encased in ash overnight and probably go through the whole process in 100 years or so. It also does not take millions of years for something to fossilize. That's the most ridiculous thing ever because what happens if you leave any organic matter out in the elements? It wants to rot. It wants to get bacteria and decompose. However, in the right, evidently arid conditions, then it will completely calcify and petrify. I mean, you can obviously see that the bone and the muscle tissue all look like it's the same stone material. So as the flesh and organic material rots away, then minerals are filling in the void and solidifying, and that's what is causing this. Now, let's look at volcanic ash just completely turning to stone. This is the town of Herculaneum. This is right at the base of Mount Vesuvius. It was supposed to be the exact same uh, eruption as what covered Pompeii and ash, only Her Herculaneum is right at the base, so they just had a pyroclastic flow of very dense ash come down, and completely solidify and turn to rock. So that whole cliff face that you see there to the right is all just volcanic ash that has been turned to stone. 
And then here's a view from the top of it when you're walking into this tourist center. You're just up on top, and it looks like a natural landscape that's just always been there. Look at that field going off to the left. But in 1709, while digging a well, they found relics down here, I mean, deep down into rock. And just like other places I've covered, like uh, Ephesus and ancient Tunisia, the boat docks are no longer anywhere near the ocean. I think they said it's about 500 meters down to the ocean now. But this is where the boat docks were on the harbor. But just look in the background there, and you can see that all of the modern landscape and modern city is up on the same level this guy is walking on. And the ancient city is 50 to 60 feet down below there. They don't know how large this city is, and it's right in very populated Italy. I mean, you can't, you can't build a train station without finding 500 archaeological sites there. And this volcanic tuff, as it is called, is found all around the world. I mean, Maine's Cranberry Island has a 2,300 foot thick layer of welded tuff, a rock formed from volcanic ash. Now, I'm not saying that this is the same event by any means, but this is where that is. Something has to account for that. I mean, this is North America where there's no major volcanoes, where Herculaneum is right in the shadow of Vesuvius. So we know for a fact that this ash turns to stone. So do we have evidence of giants all around the world of them walking through an ash event? And like I said, I'm not implying that it was all one event. It could have been. This could be all separate events. I don't know. And also along that same line of thinking is, did people take advantage of this before it was completely solidified and make it easier to dig caves and tunnels. Now, these two I'm showing you right here are definitely volcanic tough, but I, I don't know the materials of some of the other, like the Ajanthi caves, Allura caves, which these have some elaborate artwork inside. Uh, but then there's also the Long, Long Yu cave in China to where I, either they were chiseling out harder stone or it was softer and they were taking a rake to it. I don't know. But at some time, under some condition, someone was able to effortlessly just take a scoop up out of this. And think about if that was just solid mud. That'd be a kind of a hard thing to do just down in soft mud, you know? So maybe it was much more porous than we think. But one thing I'm not trying to do is say that this explains every ancient structure out there. I, I don't like it when people try to use one example to explain everything because there's different methods, there's different materials, there's a lot more to it, and you have to be a lot more exact than just random photographs on things. That's about enough from me out of this video. I'm getting tired, but I, I was going to get into a little bit on what wise up channel has been talking about because he's got some really good points in there and i've got a little bit that i can add about just the science of the the history of volcanic ash is being used for construction methods and like this example here that he shows i i mean it does look like something was there it got filled in and then the original material burned out or rotted out and I think he's quite correct with comparing it to a bridge there because that X frame support is just a very basic tool of building things. I mean, it's used a lot for bracing and whatnot. So hopefully I'll have a little time to work on videos coming up in the future and won't take so long in between. See you guys on the next one. Static out.